Welcome back to an exciting new video from Cambria and Bobby. In today's video, we build a mega quail coop. The thought behind this quail coop is to make it strong enough to be able to handle big storms, you know, like hurricanes and whatnot. So we wanted to build it heavy duty, have it painted so it'll hold up, and make it comfortable for our birds. All that and more, so stay tuned. So we went to Lowe's to go get wood, uh, and if you have wood that won't fit in your car, they will cut the wood, only one cut per piece, but still. So we picked out some 2x4 by 12 foot, and we had them cut it all into 6 foot sections. That way it was easy to get in the car, and it was already cut to the size that I needed to get started on this quail coop. As you can see, Freya loves hanging out in the garage when I'm out there. You see all her chalk and toys all over the place. Um, she usually has her tablet with her, so she's got like multiple things to do while I'm busy doing what I need to do. So here you can see I'm laying out one of the, the main foundation layers of the quail coop. Um, this is, I gotta do two of these, so, because we're doing a two level coop. And right now I got this, it's six feet by two feet wide and I'm doing all like the support beams and then right here I'm doing the floor. Um, now we did buy wood from the store but also I was trying to use up whatever wood we had lying around. So right now I'm trying to use up some old uh, three quarter inch plywood and if you're gonna do the uh, a floor with sand, bath, everything like that, I recommend doing the three quarter inch plywood because when we've used like half inch or anything smaller in the past, all it did was just crack in the middle and then fall through. Um, luckily, we didn't have any um, birds in it at the time when it did it, but at the same time, it's something you don't wanna have to deal with and repair, especially if your birds are in it. So this plywood is used uh, before it was uh, on our countertops uh, in the kitchen. So right now I'm just squaring it off, trying to get it to fit to the size that I need. So you see like I'm doing a lot of measurements, doing all this other stuff, but mainly I'm just trying to get it square. Um, and then once we get it in place here, uh, that will be the floor. Now I did use two pieces, unfortunately, because, like I said, it's what we're trying to use up. Um, for the second layer, you'll see that I uh, will use just one piece instead of two individual pieces to make the floor. When you're doing the floor for the bird bath or the sand bath, it's never a bad thing to use more than enough screws. Uh, here I'm adding a cross piece just to make sure where that crack was, it doesn't break through. Um, so it's just like a little extra layer of support. If you use a whole piece, you will not need that cross piece. And here we go, Cambria is doing, putting in silicone. And the reason for this is just to give it that extra waterproofing and to make sure the sand doesn't fall out. So we're doing a, a bead of silicone, a, 
uh, in all the cracks and any potential holes. Uh, like I said, this plywood was used before, so we don't want sand to leak out. And here I am working on all of the legs. I already, so if you look, I already put on little pieces of, like little feet on the legs. What that does is gonna help uh, give it that extra surface area when it is on our grass. We got Cambria helping me now attach the, the main flooring or the main coop area to the legs. Yes, we have a, <laughs> using whatever we can to make it a little easier because it, like I said, this is not light, it is heavy. So when it comes to working on wood, I usually like to pre-do the screws. So that's why you saw me put the screws in initially and then that way it's just easier. They're already in place when you start um, putting in uh, or attaching all the other wood pieces. So I don't use a angled wood guide. Uh, basically when I have to do like a, an angular screw in, I will pre-do it outside of actually doing the, the screwing in. Um, so basically I just get it on an angle and get it preset. You can buy actual guides to make it easier or put it while it's in place, make it easier. But I just pre-do it ahead of time and yeah, that's just how I do it. Why, why buy another tool if you don't need it? So at this point in the build, Cambria, I had to go over to her parents' house. So you see me using clamps to hold the wood in place so I can screw in the uh, cross pieces. So that's why I got these clamps up and uh, sometimes it's it works really easy, other times it doesn't. But it's a way around uh, not having two people to be able to hold the wood. So I just picked up these clamps from Harbor Freight or you can get them from Lowe's or Home Depot, wherever your hardware store is. And it just makes life so much easier if there's only, you know, yourself doing the project. Plus, I mean, you can use these clamps for other stuff. So I highly recommend if you're gonna do any sort of wood projects or just projects around the house, make sure you have some of these uh, clamps. They just make life easier. Now I know you're gonna ask, why is there an alien head on the screen? Well, I'll tell you. There's something hanging in my garage that I don't want you to see, so the alien's just gonna cover it up for me. <laughs> So this cross piece that I'm putting in, this is uh, on the front of the cage. And it's just so we have a wider opening because it is the front and we'll have the doors there. And I just wanted a wider opening. And that's why I'm using this smaller piece as my cross beam on the, this will be supporting the roof. And it'll allow me to do the other supporting beams. So. That's why that one's smaller, is just so we have more of an opening. And it was what I had, so I'm just trying to use it all up. Check out Freya, she thinks she's helping and building. <laughs> Got all like the scrap pieces of wood and just acting like she's putting it together. <laughs>
So since this cage is so heavy, I wanted to go with some heavy duty legs. So that's why all the legs and supports are two by fours. And uh, <clears throat> that way, if you need to drag it or do anything like that, um, you have issues lifting it, you're not just gonna snap the legs off. So that's why I went with a heavy duty leg setup. So the trays that we use to uh, catch all the bird poop, uh, we actually just pick them up from AutoZone. They're just like oil or um, whatever, li liquid catch trays. That's all it is. Uh, they're cheap and efficient. So it, it just makes life easier. So when we build our cages, we build it around uh, these trays. So that's why you see them like that. And it, it did take a while to get them all into place and just make sure all the the tray holding area is the right size. Here's a perfect example of uh, where that guide would come in handy, but uh, like I said, I just do it freehand, do my 45 degree, 30 degree uh, screw ends. So there you go. And I'm not following any plans on how to build this cage. This is all just like an idea that I had. So I'm kind of like building it as I go. Um, there was no like written out plans that I found online or anything. This is just from experience of doing other cages in the past, uh, ones that we modified or that we we did build. So I know Cambria, when she built the last cage, she looked at some stuff online and built it off of that. But this, this is all a custom build. And if you don't have a miter saw and you do these cages, it, it can make it a little more difficult Miter saw just makes doing all these cuts so much quicker and easier. So you see me here using my saw uh, for some of these cross member pieces. Um, yeah, I I love my Ryobi miter saw. It's only a 10 inch blade, but I haven't had any issues cutting anything. If you're gonna do like more bigger stuff, like I don't know. Uh, 4x4 four four cutting, you might want to go with the 12 inch blade, but the 10 inch, that seems to do what I need it to do, so I highly recommend this saw. Yep, my little alien head is back. Still want him to block what <laughs> I got hanging up. <laughs> Cut the door out. You can. I just use my circular saw, but you can use whatever you want. So this is the this is the divider panel with opening for to separate the open cage area from the actual like nesting coop, um, sand bath, everything like that. This way, this is going to be full of sand or you know up to a certain point and then they can just walk over this so it's just like the divider to hold the sand in so you got your nice little door opening and then also it just allows for in the colder months it keeps the heat into this area better so yeah nice nice big sand bath Once again, Cambria is gone, so I am using clamps to hold it in place to be able to, you know, keep keep the project going. Yep, there I am. 
So this is a plywood three quarter inch that my in-laws donated. They had it lying around. So I'm like, yeah, I'll take it. Cut it up, make a cage out of it. So right here, I'm dry fitting all these plywood pieces. I end up taking them off when we move it and paint it. But this is just to make sure everything's gonna fit right. So that's why I'm attaching it all, but I will be taking it off later. That's also why I'm only doing four screws in it. Later I do put more screws in to make sure everything is secure. So these doors I'm measuring out so I can cut the center out of this wood because these are the like cage doors. Um, so we will put the wire mesh and stuff on it. So that's why I'm cutting it. now. Are you supposed to use your circular saw this way? No, you can actually buy a, a saw that's made for doing this. It's a, a plunge saw, um, but I don't have one. So I am using my circular saw like a plunge saw <laughs> and then just doing the very corners, um, just cutting it out with the saw. So yeah, that's why I'm doing it this way. All right, so Bobby, we have the shell of the cage over there. It's gonna end up over here. But I have to spray the shed. We've wanted to do this, so now's the day. We're gonna get that done. That way we can move this over here, and finish painting everything. That way we can move the birds out of there and into that cage. And uh, you got Cambria painting here because she is the painter in the family. I'm not really a big fan of painting, but uh, using this uh, Graco X7 Magnum spray gun is just, it makes life easier. So you can just shoot so much more area and it just gets into all the cracks and everything. So we love this spray gun. So that's why Cambria is painting the shed with it. It just it just goes a lot quicker than if you had to roll this out so now she did do more than one coat on this she did two coats of paint and uh yeah it really didn't take that long so that's that's what's nice about using a spray gun much time I'll have left before this storm hits but I'm trying to get stuff done outside I already um, anchored the trampoline down before the hurricane comes Freya's gonna have to clean up her stuff but that's anchored over here is we got the old coop um, that was like the uh, recovery coop and then this is the new one this thing is the beast. We got, it's, it's a lot bigger. So all the birds we have currently are in here. So there's this whole part, which is all open. So they can get the fresh air. And then this is their like, where they can lay their eggs and everything like that. I'll show you. Oh yeah, there's even an egg in there, see? But, yeah, there's a couple eggs. So they got their food and everything. This thing is way bigger than the old cage. Definitely heavy duty. And I know people are concerned. You know, we got hurricane coming. This is actually built a lot stronger. It's heavy, 
we got really heavy legs on it and it's actually mounted right it's actually mounted right to the shed so it's got a backing to it it shouldn't blow away it shouldn't blow over uh, we have solar panels running all the fans so to pull the hot air out of the coop area this is an exhaust fan same with this this one i'm not running because there's no birds up there but this is an exhaust fan so it pulls the hot air out and over here we got two fans to push it in you see how they're all huddled around the fans they they love them so ideally that watering container is going to come out once i install the watering system and then you can see look at this so this fan is going to blow cold air in it blows directly into the coop nesting area and then that exhaust fan will pull that hot air out so we got some airflow all the way through this time so yeah this is our new cage ready for the storm and then the old cage uh, we took it all apart. I got to modify this. This cage is going to be set up over here and we'll mount after I modify it. It's going to be mounted against the shed here. So then that way we'll have plenty of room for plenty of birds and they should be safe during the storm or a storm, really any. Right birds? Right ducks? And then, I mean, besides that, we do have, like, the whole yard is fenced in. So it kind of blocks a lot of the wind um, that we would get from a storm. And then the ducks, they got their areas all redone. They love it. They love hanging out by the quail birds over here in the shade. That's the other benefit by having it behind the shed here is they are not in the direct sunlight all day so they're gonna stay cooler um, because they won't be in that direct line of sight for the Sun they'll have it in the morning so they'll be able to warm up and then after that the uh, Sun will be overhead or over on the other side because you can see it's way over there so they're just it's just shouldn't be as warm for them that's for sure so yeah, this is the new shed. I just got to do the watering system still, and I'm going to do it pretty much like this system. Bucket on top, flow down through, except this time I think I'm going to put, instead of being on the outside here, I might put all these watering cups in the inside along the back of the cage here. So then that way it's more spread out, and then they don't have to be right in front of the fans to drink and whatnot. So that's the cage pretty much is done it's just watering systems optional fans optional but we do that just so uh, the birds can be more comfortable so there you go all painted all done and like the reason why we have it raised a little higher is because we have our sprinkler system that pops up and still waters the grass and we don't want to kill all the grass that cage is going to get longer legs so then it won't be right on the grass so we don't kill it all so yeah it's a big cage it's two feet by six feet so it, it's the biggest one we built so far and definitely the most heavy duty all right i am done with this cage i got the whole watering system all done we got the valve when you need to either drain it out or whatever. We got this valves open. If you need to do like some maintenance on the bucket or something, you can always shut this off, whatever. Or if you, well, it's actually, if you need to do maintenance on the system, any of the plugs where the water comes out, you can shut this valve so it just doesn't run water. Uh, this valve down here is for draining the system um, That way if you need to like change the water it gets kind of funky or whatever you can just change it all out and Yeah, so we got on this watering system. We got these um, Little tubey guys because it will let me know if they're out of water. So can't really see through the bucket, you know Do it right do it lows um, 
but this will let you see if there's water in the, in the line. And then same right here. I didn't do it down here like I did on the other cage just because I they were all out of this part. So, but either way, it's as long as we can see where the cage is at, that's what matters. So we know if they got water or not. Birds seem to like it. You can see how they're all their little watering spots are right there. And I put a wire mesh above it. Yeah, I'll show you. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey Dad, um, hey, we really so love we got this new cage. the mesh oh, above it because what would happen is, is they would all stand on these and things the and then it would they're just so leak great. water. Um, so now they're, it kind of protects it from them standing on it. And then they really don't lose any space because they still have that little spot they can go up. Right guys? Oh yeah, Dad. Yeah. So, there you go, a total a six feet by two feet by five and a half feet tall cage with three solar powered fans per level, five gallon watering system. So yeah, there you go. Heavy duty cage, it survived all the winds we had from the storm that came through, which wasn't really, really that bad. Um, so yeah, that's our new quail coop. It is a monster, it's heavy, that's for sure. But there you go. All right, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that bell and leave a like. Um, leave a comment if you uh, have any questions about the cage and I'll try to answer them the best I can. <laughs> um, so yeah, see you next time. Bye!